God is dead and we have killed him, said Nietzsche. One of the most misunderstood phrases of all philosophy. My name is Rodrigo Guim, anthropologist and social critic, and this is the channel Critique with Nietzsche and Foucault. To begin to understand, we have to search for the genealogy of the idea of God in Christianity. And this cannot be done without reference to Plato. Plato divided the world into a world of appearances and a world of ideas, which would be the true world of which the one we live in, the, the world of appearances, would be only an imperfect copy. Christianity will take this legacy forward, speaking of the world of the afterlife as the truest world, and thus slandering this world in which we live as the smallest in value. The great accusation that Nietzsche makes to Christianity is precisely to idealize a true world in an afterlife, to slander life, to demean life. It is what he will call the will to nothingness, or nihilism, in its most impotent form, of one who lives a life so weak that one needs to rely on revenge against life in an afterlife. Aphorism 125 of the Gay Science is where Nietzsche created a parable, a little story, that I'm going to tell you here and I'm going to comment on every little part of that story as well. Aphorism 125 begins like this. The Madman. Have you not heard of that madman who lit a lantern in the bright morning hours, ran to the marketplace and cried incessantly, I seek God, I seek God. As many of those who did not believe in God were standing around just then, he provoked much laughter. Has he got lost? asked one. Did he lose his way like a child? asked another. Or is he hiding? Is he afraid of us? Has he gone on a voyage? emigrated? Thus they yelled and laughed. You see that in this parable, People in the marketplace quickly label the one who goes looking for God as crazy. Many of them no longer believe in God. They believe that they are above that belief, that this can only be madness. Continues. The madman jumped into their midst and pierced them with his eyes. Where is God? he shouted. I will tell you, we have killed him. You and I, all of us are his murderers. But how did we do this? How could we drink up the sea? Who gave us the sponge to wipe away the entire horizon? What were we doing when we unchained the earth from its sun? Where is it moving to now? Where do we move to? Away from all suns? Are we not falling continually? backward, sideward, forward, in all directions? Is there still any up or down? Do we wander as if through an infinite nothingness? Do we not feel the breath of the empty space? Has it not become colder? Is not night continually closing in on us? Do we not need to light lanterns in the morning? Do we not hear the noise of grave diggers burying God? Do we not smell the divine decomposition? Gods do decompose. God is dead. God remains dead. And we have killed him. Here the madman makes an accusation. We are all murderers of God. God was what gave foundation for all things, was the value of all values was the very determination of universal truth, justice, reason. Without this foundation, how would we be determining the difference between true and false, right and wrong, justice and injustice? 
Nietzsche points to the secularization of culture, the overthrow of what held all moral principles and the very meaning of life together. What takes the center place, the foundation of, what, of all things that we call universal today, is man, with a capital M, that which stands today as the measure of all things. A man who, when he believes that he carries morality and meaning in himself, used his own Christian morality to supersede God's place. Outmaneuvering God, man now seeks in his reason the measure of all things. The aphorism continues. How shall we comfort ourselves, the murderers of all murderers? What was holiest and mightiest of all that the world has yet owned bled to death under our knives? Who will wipe this blood off us? What water is there for us to clean ourselves? What expiatory rites, what sacred games shall we have to invent? Is not the greatness of this deed too great for us? Must not ourselves become gods simply to appear worthy of it? There has never been a greater deed, and whoever is born after us, for the sake of this deed, he will belong to a higher history than all history until then. Nietzsche notes a cultural historical event, a profound change in the values of a culture. If God is no longer the foundation of all values, and now they are found in man, this is an event full of dangers and possibilities at the same time. The danger lies in not evaluating and understanding this event in a way that is interesting to us. The madman points to this and those who are there are laughing at him because they don't see what is happening, because they have no idea that something great has been modified. And there lies the danger, because when we think that this event is already given, that the old values that had their foundation in God are not being reproduced, we will be just reactivating old values and ways of life in a new form called man. This universal man is a new system of truth that still bears many marks of the old system of God. But this event of the death of God as the foundation of all things and all sense and all values brings new possibilities that can be used by those who are not content to just change into a new paradigm called man in the place of God. The aphorism continues. At that moment, the madman silenced and again he looked at his listeners. They too were silent, looking at him in astonishment. At last, he threw his lantern on the ground, and it broke into pieces and went out. I have come too soon, he said then. My time is not yet. This tremendous event is still on its way, still going on. It has not yet reached the years of man. Lightning and thunder require time. The light of the stars require time. Deeds, though done, still require time to be seen and heard. This deed is even more distant to them than the most distant stars, and yet they have done it themselves. It is also said that on the same day the madman forced his way into several churches, and in each one intoned his Requiem Eternum Deo. Let out and called to account, he simply answered, what, after all, are these churches now, if they are not the tombs and sepulchres of God? In order to understand this event, this radical change in culture that we are living today in societies that, even though they are largely secular, reproduce the Christian ways of life, of thinking, acting, and feeling, but today they call these ways the human way, or the human nature way. We still reproduce morality and the sense of things anchored in this paradigm of man, which was anchored on the paradigm of God. The slander and devaluation of life that has always been so important 
in Christianity continues. Value in the hereafter has become now value in the ideals of humanism, of reason and progress. There is no anti-humanism here. Humanism is just a mistake. It's not so much about trying to measure the value of things on the foundation called God. What increasingly prevails is a faith in the categories of reason. History itself has become linear and rational. In the book Will to Power, Nietzsche says, the faith in the categories of reason is the cause of nihilism. We have measured the value of the world according to categories that refer to a purely fictitious world. What Nietzsche proposes is to bring nihilism to its inevitable consequences, and that includes calling into question the very concept of truth. If there is no more measure of all things, if man himself is only an ideal, then we have to carry out the valuation, the transvaluation of all values, to create new values, without resorting to universals, without resorting to anything that comes from a negation of ourselves or of life. To constitute ourselves as living beings. Nietzsche wants a corporeal philosophy, a philosophy that includes the blood that flows in our veins and includes the multiplicity of bodies. The death of God and after God, the death of man, as a measure of all things, presents itself as an opening, an event that brings new possibilities, including the possibility of new values. In speaking of God as that foundation laid by Christianity that ceases to exist as the foundation and measure of all things, Nietzsche says nothing about the ontological existence of reality or of God. It is to the moralistic and righteous God that Nietzsche is addressing himself. This is the God who dies, the theocentric world is the one who dies, which is supplanted by man, who is now the new measure of all things and is also dominantly moralistic, is organized by reactive forces. In this androcentric world, a world where white men are more men than other beings and are thus considered more rational and universal, it is now man who is sought to speak the truth and to do good or evil and based on this paradigm called man. But what will follow man as a paradigm? What new paradigm supplants man? Because nihilism continues to look for foundations. The history of nihilism it is this incessant search for new, more truthful truths that will supplant older truths then the new systems of truth in nihilism will need a new foundation. After man falls as a foundation, nihilism can, can look for another foundation or it can pave the way for us to no longer have to hold on to any universal foundation. We don't even have nature as a foundation to hold us together because nature has no opinion about us, as Nietzsche says. Nature as a foundation is still a nature linked to the logic of metaphysics. Whether in nature, whether through science or mysticism, the truth, the fundamentals of existence is sought again within this metaphysical system, uh, is sought again for the right way to live, to think, to feel, to act. And so nihilism will continue until we can perhaps become free spirits, those who don't need crutches to live because they don't slander the chaos of life. Morality is counter nature, says Nietzsche. That is, nature is also not a crutch. The sea of knowledge is much more open and our values and senses have no fixed foundations. And to not have foundations can be a great relief for those who take risks with prudence in these waters. Let us not just be what we can be, because what we can be, we will never fully know. We need to start creating 
and telling new stories. Well, people, that's all for today. I hope you liked it. I want to thank all my supporters on Patreon and other websites. If you're interested in taking courses with me or supporting this channel, you will find everything in the description of the video. See you soon.